Cameras, the lifeline of every photographer. During our active years as photographers, how many cameras do we change? How many cameras do we try out? A multitude, right? We like some, we love some. We probably do not loathe any, but our commercial endeavors probably force us to select a certain type of cameras. And then there are some cameras you just can't let go of. Some cameras which just blow your mind. Some cameras which are not easy, which give you all the trouble, but when the picture comes out, you're just mind blown. We'll talk about one such camera. Today. If you see the evolution of cameras, you know, cameras have evolved, camera companies are making cameras which make life much easier for the photographer. You have more and more dynamic range so that if you make exposure mistakes, you can correct it later. You can recover highlights, you can, you know, push the shadows. You get, what, countless focus points today, right? Uh, just about a decade back, you had like nine focus points, but now you have plethora of focus points all over uh, the frame and they're pushing autofocus faster and faster. The processing speeds of cameras are increasing. Uh, 20 frames per second is, is pretty much you know, the norm today. So, so while life is becoming easy for the photographer, there are still some cameras which push you, which push you to think, which push you to understand the basics of photography, which are quite unforgiving and which force you to go back to the basics and make sure you're getting the right picture in camera and not on Photoshop. That's what we're going to go talk about today. Uh, so I've been shooting now for 31 years and I'm pretty much used to slow cameras, manual focus only cameras, uh, unforgiving cameras, film which had, you know, five stops of dynamic range, maybe slide film which practically had no dynamic range and, you know, you just couldn't go wrong with it in terms of exposure. So in terms of digital, the first such camera was the Leica Monochrome. Slow as a snail, terrible LCD, but the files that used to come out of that were just phenomenal. And, you know, it, it, it was probably unusable beyond uh, 800, but I've shot it at 4000 ISO. It had very organic grain rather than digital noise. So that was a phenomenal camera. I just loved it. It, has a C, it had a CCD sensor, not the current CMOS. And that was like a first, second generation or first generation full frame uh, camera. Now, in current times, we have one more camera like that. This is what we have. Now, Sigma has a line of cameras called the DP line. This is the DP1. I also have the DP3. Now, the only difference is that they come with different lenses. So this one is a wide angle. I use it mostly for landscapes. This is a 19 mm. This is a crop sensor. So that becomes virtually about a 28 mm field of view. And now why am I excited about this camera, right? We'll talk about that. So let's talk about what is great about this camera or this series of uh, DP cameras, right? For one, the image quality. You have to see it to believe it. The details are just absolutely stunning, right? So if you enlarge it even to 100% and see the picture, the details are 
absolutely absolutely stunning actually and i'm not kidding this is an aps-c sensor but this is comparable to a medium format 50 megapixel camera now this one is a 20 megapixel camera the second great thing about this is the colors the colors are extremely true to what you see and again there's a reason why it is like that and third they also have a dedicated monochrome mode now this is not your monochrome where you know there is something happening within the camera which basically turns it into monochrome and then when you download the raw it kind of turns into color and then you know you go back and turn it to black and white but this is genuine monochrome so you can shoot black and white images with this camera right and the lenses now these come uh, there is a DP0 there's a 1 2 and 3 so you have now these are all fixed lenses so you have a combination of four lenses but that means four cameras all are fixed lenses so the lenses again are stunning now if you see here the sensor the sensors right here and the lens is right here there's that's like a few millimeters between where the lens ends and where the sensor begins right so that is an extremely good advantage to avoid a lot of optical issues which are caused by flange distance which is the distance between the lens and the sensor so that is one and the reason why the details are so amazing this currently is the only camera while it uses a CMOS sensor it uses a foveon interpretation scheme which is not the Bayer interpolation so that actually is the reason why this camera has such amazing amazing details and color now I'll leave a link below you can go and check it out to read more about foveon versus Bayer the images side by side are you know really really uh, where rubber hits the road so I will leave some pictures uh, you know original files where you can see the comparison and decide for yourself so the foveon sensor then is the reason why the details are so amazing but then why is everybody not using it this should be a rage right and the reason it's and there's a reason it's not so the processing time for this is actually pretty slow so you take a picture so let, let me take a picture and see how much time it takes to process and show me the picture so I shot that now that's when the picture came so that's like a clean two to three seconds right so this by no means is a fast fast camera now what does that mean that means uh, you probably cannot use this for wedding but let's say you're a landscape photographer you're a discerning landscape photographer who loves the details very good camera for a landscape photographer incidentally I'm actually sitting in the middle of a dry stream so come at the monsoon this uh, stream is going to be flooded with a lot of water but it's fun actually sitting in the middle of a stream right now so landscape now again this will not work very well due to the foveon sensor this does not work very well at very high ISOs right so uh, there will be noise there'll be a lot of grains above let's say 800 or you know thousand thereabouts right but if you know how to use light if you're a discerning photographer who understands light and if let's say you're shooting in the studio products models portraits fashion this is going to rock the scene the, the details like I said are absolutely insane you blow it up to 100% you can crop the hell out of it and it'll still look fantastic and that means when you print this this is going to just be absolutely absolutely great check out the startup time of this guy now it's not all slow right I mean this is much faster than the Hasselblad X1D at least in terms of startup time so I press the button and there it is it's ready to shoot right now it has nine focus points okay there are three six nine right so those are the focus points so again this does not have focus points all over the screen but guess what look at this guy here it has face detection FACE face detection right now if you see here there are no dials for modes so there's a button for mode 
so you there's aperture priority manual shutter priority and p and then you have custom functions by the way that's a nice touch and uh, what else do you have okay let's go into the menu so iso you can set and you can set it in one third uh, stop increments metering mode there are three evaluative center weighted and spot drive mode so you do have continuous but guess what don't even try this by the time you shoot two or three the buffer is full and uh, you know it, it's of no no use so that's that then uh, you have bracketing you have sfd which is actually uh, a mode where you can take really really high resolution pictures uh, white balance i've found the auto white balance to be pretty good but remember if you're taking uh, you know shots in very very tricky lighting conditions it can actually get fooled uh, but it is pretty decent image quality now here's the deal if you shoot raw you can process the foveon sensor raw only on uh, sigma's proprietary software so raw can be processed only on sigma's proprietary software and that is a pain to use right now <clears throat> so the alternative luckily you have dng and you can shoot in dng without actually not pretty much any loss and you can process it in photoshop now here's the most interesting part the color modes so you have a standard vivid neutral portrait landscape i've tried pretty much all of them they all look stunning and then you have the monochrome and this is remember as i said it's true monochrome it is not your uh, uh, you know uh, extrapolated monochrome now if you shoot this you can actually put like film cameras and when you shot black and white you can actually put red filters orange filters you know to get a uh, better uh, complexion and uh, you know better skin tones and stuff and uh, you know red filters can make blue skies look almost black so you can do all of that uh the rest are okay now here's preview exposure in m mode now when you're uh, in the studio you might want to change this and then these are all very normal stuff okay there you go face detection there and that is pretty useful All right. Uh I'm back from my trip. A wonderful trip I must say, a beautiful place, beautiful location and this magical guy in my hand. So, I'm back in my studio. Now, let's talk about the handling of this camera, right? Now look at the shape. It's a quirky shape, I agree, but that also makes it fit in your hands very snugly, right? So yeah, there is there is a th there's a place for your thumb to rest and the buttons are all, you know, at your fingertips. uh you know the back buttons and the front buttons all are at fingertips so it's very easy and a lot of times when i went this uh, this almost passed off as a cell phone with with these attachments that come nowadays right so a lot of times it felt as if you know people in the street felt i'm carrying a cell phone with a with an attachment right so so you know it it really fits well it feels nice and it's so small that you can just put it in your uh you know small carry bag or even a laptop bag and carry it even if you're carrying a couple of these which i was so so that's brilliant it's not heavy it's it's pretty light but still pretty sturdy and i'm assuming because the lens is part of the body you know it it's it, it can withstand light amount of rain and stuff so uh, from that perspective it's it's really amazing all the buttons the tactile feel is really good they they are very responsive and uh, you know these uh, these scrolling uh, buttons are also pretty good uh, it it does feel a little plasticky at times but uh, you know the basic uh, you know uh, frame of the body is really good so i i really like this and even when you put a flash trigger on it it doesn't look awkward it really looks nice so uh, we're here at my studio and uh, i'm uh, going to do a shoot Now here's the beauty. I have the Pro Photo 
universal trigger on the DP3 which has a 50 mm so the 75 mm equivalent I'm going to do a portrait shoot now the thing is the universal trigger does not support HSS right uh, high speed sync but guess what this camera doesn't need high speed sync because it has a leaf shutter inside the lens it can sync up to 1250 that's 1 by 1250 of a second so I really don't need high speed sync but I'm here in the studio using Profoto lights with a beauty dish for this portrait shoot and uh, you can meet the model here beautiful Maya Hi. so we're going to do a quick shoot quick portrait of hers and uh, just check the uh, you know uh, shooting at uh, high speeds without HSS So as I shoot in the studio, uh, the camera is detecting the face, F-A-C-E. So I can use the face detection and shoot in the studio. Uh, it's not 100%, it, it misses sometimes, sometimes it catches on. So, you know, uh, that's a bit of an issue, but uh, largely it does. And uh, uh, I'm... Now I can't shoot continuous in this while the lights actually have an amazing recycle speed the camera does not unfortunately there is a lot of buffering happening so I can't go cut 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 I, I just have to take one shot and give a bit of a pause uh, so that's the only issue otherwise the details are just mind blowing so that's what we're here for all right Let's answer the question, uh, who is this camera for, right? This camera is all about details and absolute, absolute minute details even when you blow it up to 100%, right? So if you're a landscape photographer, if you have ample time, set it up on a tripod, you know, take your time, understand the light, understand the surroundings and then shoot to get all the details in your picture and then print. This could be for you. If you're a portrait photographer using lights in a studio or even outdoor using light or understand light well, this could be the camera for you. You take your time. You can't remember you can't do 10 FPS on this, but a single shot will give you amazing amazing details so this could be for you if you're a street photographer who works the scene observes the scene waits for the decisive moment this is a great camera for you the monochrome mode as i told you is just fantastic and if you're shooting color then the colors are extremely true so this is is a great camera in your hands product photographer right i mean how could i forget that if you shoot in a studio with ample light, you shoot products and you want absolute details for your clients and your clients appreciate details in the products, this is a camera for you. So, so although this is slow, this will uh, you know, take its own time, but it is an extremely useful camera in the right hands. Now remember, if you're a, if you're a beginner, you don't understand photography very well, it, it might not be the right tool in your hand. But if you've done photography for some time, you understand light, color, contrast, composition. Those are the most essential parts of photography. If you understand those basics and you've done photography for some time, you understand the zone system. You, you're not looking for high dynamic range. You're not looking for every picture, you know, to recover uh, highlights and push shadows. You understand color. You understand color contrast. You know, if those are things which you love and you appreciate and uh, you know that's what your art is all about this i tell you for the price is an absolute absolute steal even if you buy because these are fixed focal lengths and different focal lengths and different cameras so even if you buy two or three of these you're still better off than really investing uh, probably in a medium format or larger right so that's what this camera is for.